strike of a light bulb. I just air it out and leave with the mic broke. Your micro, I'm hard body like Tycho. Heavy metal Chevys with nitro. Addicted to the vapors of paper. Hypnotic to the thirst. I'm pulling off criminal capers. I know the cocaine crackery stinks, but that's what it is. Surrounded by the khakis and mints. We move. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are at the Starship Phoenix in this episode of Developer Commentary. I am Mike Stout. I am Tony Garcia. Holy shit, Tony. Starship Phoenix. Mike, I'm excited. <laughs> this level, man, uh, I had nothing to do with it. This level was a pain in the ass. I this know was, this. This was Ken, right? Or I was this... I think it was Ken. I think Ken had moved on to being a designer at this point. Yes. Or... No, no, no. Or so was... halfway. He was... It was weird. He was still a programmer. He was right, still being Right, because he did the Quark missions with you. With me and Sean, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then, th yeah, this level was a nightmare to do. Uh, I mean, there's, what, like six copies of this level, and they all do something different. Whoa, I can go in here? Uh, yeah, there's a lot going on. These are your quarters. I set up the VG-9000 to play vid comic discs. Is that the... Uh... Oh, that's not the Game Pyramid. What happened to the Game Pyramid? It was originally the Game Pyramid, and we swapped it out with the VG-9000 late in... I think it was beta when it got swapped out. Is there any reason for that? Uh, maybe they didn't want to put the Insomniac branding this? in the game again? No, I guess. Uh, I'm not sure, actually. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, you're telling me... It would have been nice if they let us put a PlayStation in there. <laughs> I can't believe that, you know, someone with as good of a relationship as us with Sony would have a problem with that. This is the rules are rules, I guess. If you, have a vid comic, you know what I've always found kind of interesting is, like, the bars on this cage are so big. <laughs> like, Captain Quark would have no problem running through these bars. But for some reason, he chooses not to. Vid Comics, man, there's some heartbreak. I'm, I'm looking forward to that one. Are you really? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I won't be. I wouldn't be able to talk as much about it as Sean could, because he did most of the work on it. But I did a lot of the early development, and that was a. Uh, I think one of my first big design heartbreaks in my career were those things, and not because they didn't turn out well. They turned out really well, but because of how completely unlike my original vision they are. <laughs> Okay, so, oh, this, uh, this bridge, a lot of work went into this. A lot of work went into this. Because different characters have to be up here doing different things at different points in the game. And... Uh-huh, and they all talk to each other, and they have a randomized uh, dialogue trees that go on. Yep. There was actually a bit of drama on that. Because um, they have those conversations that they have with each other. Uh-huh. But, uh, the... I mean, the animators weren't about to animate, uh, talk. Oh, wait, I'm, I'm going to stop because this is the greatest Ratchet Clank character ever made on screen right now. And I shouldn't talk over him. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Nefarious. Soon, all robots will bask in the liberty and equality of my benevolent iron fisted rule. I love the sign language. It's the greatest joke. It's it's so good. It looks like uh, an animator had a lot of fun with it too. That's all for now. I love Doctor Nefarious. He is the best character they've ever done. I think on this game, there's a lot of people who would agree with you. What what do you love so much about Doctor Nefarious? He's just so manic. It's unbelievable. He's just all over the place. And the emotion, and honestly, what it is more than anything else, they animated him so well in this game. Like he is, for a game as cartoonish as this game already is, he is still like a cartoon character. Yes, he's Chuck Chuck Jones, Looney Tunes, like yeah. Smash and Stretch. The, he's and the they, most that way of any character. It's so amazing just to watch him move in this game they did such an amazing job with him just the great voice acting great animation great design just everything about him i absolutely love 
And his scheme is probably the best scheme <laughs> that we've had. To turn all the squishies into... Uh... That's right. Yeah, I think you're right. I mean, and it gave us the Courtney Gears video. I mean, there's so oh, much that he gave us. That's, those are all reasons I love this game. Uh, whoa, it's time for Marcadia. Is it already? Yeah, I mean, that was I didn't just... even get to tell my story, but we'll get to that later, I suppose. Is this the story about the drama with the conversations? With the conversations. Well, we'll, we'll come back to the Starship Phoenix. Once that have... is a hook for a later episode, my friends. Yeah, I think once we have the Q-Force in there, we will, we will talk about that. Um, f let's fly to Marcadia. Oh, that galactic map. I had so much to do with that galactic map. Did you really? In this game, yeah. I did a bunch of design work on that, and I was really proud of how it turned out. Uh, sometime when we have a really boring uh, uh, session, I'll talk about the map. Uh, but I think we're going to have enough to talk about in this level without needing to go into the galactic map. Uh, is this your level? Marcadia was another Colin level. Another Colin level. Uh, They're all Colin levels. <laughs> We're going to have a lot... Uh, most of these levels are going to be Colin or Allgaier, and then some of them are going to be me. Uh, in this game, I did a lot of puzzle design that shows up in, in a bunch of different levels. That's uh, right. Apparently, there was a fight that you still hold against me that I don't remember at all. Yes, that was actually... Uh, I think the last level of the game was when we had maybe the bitterest argument we've ever had. I don't remember any bitterness at all, I, but apparently that you hold on to this to I, this day. I think I'm not surprised that you don't remember the bitterness because at that point you had maybe negative four hours of sleep. <laughs> uh, I, I did get a stern talking to because of it, though. So that's that's mainly why I remember it is because it got it got marked on my review. Oh, did it really? Well, figuratively. I love this level, man. This is the introduction of the three-eyed Tyranoids. Yeah. And I love those guys. Oh, They're really good. Talk about the how the Tyranoids of different ranks have the different eyes. Like, uh, I mean, people probably noticed it, but it's a little little thing. Yeah, uh, we decided to... Uh, we wanted to have a little bit more consistency in the enemy design as we went through here. Especially uh, for I don't... the main enemies in the game. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure whose decision it was, uh, where where that where that edict came from, but that's sort of what where we took this is that rather than have every enemy in every level be completely different, which was the Ration Clank one and two approach, right? Was that we have a lot more consistency, and you see the same enemies over and over and over again, and that was ideally to save a lot on art and animation time, so we could spend that time elsewhere, right? Rather than just having to constantly be doing new enemies and new animations. And these guys are kind of cool. I do oh, like shit. them. Uh, and so uh, we started off with the little one-eyed Tyranoids, which are, are swarmers. Right. The two-eyed Tyranoids are the are little guys that uh, still aren't big enough to do weapons and ranged attacks and stuff, but they pilot vehicles. So you see them in the planes and you see them in the mechs. Right. And you do a few other things. That's the two-eyed Tyranoids. Well, and the three-eyed Tyranoids the, become our ranged enemies. The two-eyeds uh, do, do come at you in melee also. Oh, do they? Yeah, they were in the level zero. Okay. And then, uh, I don't remember. I think we went up to five. Uh, I think you're five right, by yeah. Five yeah. I think it was originally supposed to be six or something, because, like, the, the last Tyranoid got cut, and he was, like, the fast-roping shield Tyranoid. Do you remember him? No, I like, don't remember him at all. He, he, he got through the design phase and got cut in the art phase because he was just too, like, they, we just couldn't afford to do the character. Gotcha. Crap, I don't have any more. Ugh. Oh, yeah. look at that. That was an amazing jump. I don't think you're supposed to be able to do that. <laughs> uh, I think it has something to do with the climbing bug that was present in this game. Uh, you know, like, the wrench attack would let you climb uh, uh, geometry that wasn't supposed to be climbed. Uh-huh. That's it. There's not much more story to that. I think if you go, like, if you go into first person and use the wrench, you can jump infinitely somehow. Uh... I don't know. The League of Climbers can probably post. Like, did, did you know this existed? No, I didn't know. We had a subgroup on the forums called the League of Climbers who wanted us to make sure to put that bug in every future version of Ratchet and Clank so that they could climb to areas they weren't supposed to get to and, uh, 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 you know, explore. And they were sort of upset that we took it out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
was I saying? I mean, you're, that's not that's never going to happen. If people have that hope, I'm just going to dash that for you right now. Nobody is ever going to purposely leave in a bug as a bug just so you can break the game in new and interesting ways. <laughs> yes, especially not a bug that lets you get outside of geometry. That's right. Uh, because, because there's a lot of work that goes into making sure you don't get outside of geometry. And uh, if, if you can get outside of geometry and Sony's testing finds it, you are not allowed to ship your game on the PlayStation 2. That's right. So, you know, the, the stakes are pretty high there. Uh, it's ba basically, it's, it's you can't ship with any A-bugs that you know about, right? Right. And uh, an A-bug was anything that kept you from being able to complete the game, pretty much. Like, if you fell if through it cra collision. Well, if it crashed or caused you to turn off the PlayStation to progress, that was an A-bug. Right. And, and falling outside of the bounds of the level would cause you to... Uh, uh, now, of course, you could get back in, theoretically, but they would count oh, it. Oh, it's Inferno time. Oh, I can't kill it with the shotgun. That's a, it's meant to only be hit with the wrench. Why so is you that? don't hit them by accident. Oh, that's clever. That's really clever. Uh, come here. This level, uh, we had a hard time getting the difficulty tuning uh, working on. Like... Um, this level was hard, really, really hard for a yeah. lot of the game, and the uh, the difficulty tuning only came in really late. Did you code this level? Oh well, I mean, I did the tyranoids. Okay. So I mean, I had that part of it, uh, but again, like, there's so much. Uh, we, the the breakup of who owned the levels really started to become nebulous in this game, uh, just what, because. I'm sorry, what was that? The, the breakdown of who was coding the levels became really nebulous in this game. Because I had, you know, a couple enemies in the level, and then Jared had the battlefield section in the level, and Jared also had, like, you know, the the troopers. Right. And so, and the, the, there were a lot of bits and pieces about that kind of thing where somebody has this section, somebody has this section, and it started to become more of a mishmash of not who's in charge of the level, but who's in charge of different parts of the level. Oh, the infector. Oh, the suck cannon. The suck cannon. The splitting hydra. Man, we had lots of trouble with that weapon. We'll be able to talk about when uh, when that, when that, we buy that. I'm going to get the blaster. That's probably a good call. It's just, it, you can't play through the whole game without a blaster. Um, all right, let's do a mission. What's funny about that inferno crate that you broke a little bit earlier, that I just think is kind of funny, is that we put that second wretch on Ratchet, and we were gonna give him a set of new attacks just so it looked cooler when he was swinging around two wrenches or whatever. But the animator was like, "No, we're not doing that. You, you're retarded. Why? Of course, we're not gonna be doing two-handed weapon attacks." It was it was funny. Uh, uh, so I remember the animators used to say no a lot to care like animations that would that were superfluous, right? They had a ton of work to do. Yeah. They didn't have enough time for this, and then we did resistance. And all the animators were doing on resistance was quarter turn to the left, quarter turn to the right, half turn to the left, half turn to the right, right? Like they were bored out of their mind. So on Tools of Destruction, when they're like, hey, can we make a dance animation for every enemy? They were like, please, please, can we make a dance animation? It was a real marked difference uh, between sort of getting them to put more personality in. And it's not that they didn't want to do it. On this game, it's just there was just so much to do. There was a lot to do. But you can. I mean, that was the thing. I mean, we the, the whole point of the of making the Tyranoids reappear in all the levels was because they didn't have time to do a, a whole bunch of suite of enemy animations. Exactly. So, uh, yeah, I mean, we had all the cutscene work and I had all the character work and there was so much going on. Tony, I think I'm going to need you to uh, to narrate here because I I just. I'm not going to be able to survive. That's fine. I think I'm just, I'll just talk about the plasma whip while you concentrate yes, on yes. not Stro dying. Stroke your ego, Tony. Everybody wants to see it. <laughs> so the way the plasma whip came about being was Chainblade existed in Ratchet and Clank 2, and he was pretty awesome. I mean, there's no denying that Chainblade was pretty awesome. I think that's a given. Right. And I was playing a lot of Soul Calibur at the time, and Ivy also has her little chain blade thing. And I was like, that's so cool, that chain sword that Ivy has in Soul Calibur. Why can't I do something like that? Like, it wasn't even like, I want to put this in the game. 
we were just in pre-production and we were trying to do new and interesting things. And I was like, how do they do that? I want to do a sort of chain sword like Ivy does. I, I would I would like to think that Chain Blade inspired Ivy's chain sword. That's right. Yeah, exactly. And so on the pre-production, I basically took Chain Blade and I started just playing around with his swords a little bit and trying to make a, a chain sword a little bit more like the one they had in Soul Calibur. And so in the Insomniac Museum, I was just, or I don't know where at what level, I think it was the Insomniac Museum where I was doing my tests. I was just sitting around with Chain Blade and having him do his different animations and just trying to make a weapon that was on him that, you know, reacted well to his animations and, and that like wasn't animation driven, which that was the big goal was to make it so the animators didn't have to animate a bunch of attacks, just he was able to swing and the weapon would swing uh, in a way that was reasonable. And this that sort of thing wasn't easy to do in this uh, in our engine, right? Um, I mean, the engine wasn't prohibitive to it. It's just a difficult thing to do in general. I mean, you don't see it very often. Well, now, Even nowadays, it, right, you've, you've got Havoc, you've got physics. I mean, we didn't have anything like that. No, we had no physics. Um, but, I mean, the shortcut is usually to just animate a whip. Like, you look at any game with a whip, uh, Soul Calibur included, and it's just they play their attack animation, and they play an animation on the weapon that's suited for that attack. Right. Castlevania does it that way. Soul Calibur does it that way. Every game with a whip does it that way, because that's how you do it. If you want it to look really, really good, that's how you do it. And uh, I would just, this was just more of an experiment for me to do it without animation just to see if I could if I could do it. That was my goal. Now That's I, all I wanted to do. I remember a lot of people telling you you could you you wouldn't be able to. Is, is this, uh, is, did that actually happen? Yeah, I mean, I don't know if they said I wouldn't be able to because it was... I think it was mostly that it's a difficult problem and I'm not that smart a guy. <laughs> I think that's mostly where it came from. Uh, and, I mean, it's, it's, and it's a, another melee weapon that may not have been something we wanted. Right, exactly. Well, I mean, it wasn't meant for Ratchet. It was meant for an enemy. Like, and I was just hoping maybe we'll make an enemy somewhere and this will be on him and that'll be kind of cool. That's that's as far as I had hoped to ever take it, right? That maybe at some point we'll have a melee enemy and I'll pop it on him and that'll be kind of neat. And, um, I mean, another reason why people thought it wouldn't work, uh, and they were right if the, for this one, is that they thought I wanted to make a realistic whip. <laughs> and there's no way I could ever do that. Sure. Like, there's no chance in hell you're ever going to get a realistic win without proper physics. And certainly not on a PlayStation 2. Certainly not. Uh, and so I I was on it for maybe a few weeks, just trying to get this sort of chain work up and running. And eventually I had chain blade swinging around and doing his stuff. And I showed it to one of the designers. I think it was Brian Algeyer who I showed it to. Okay. And I was like, hey, look at this thing I did. How about we get an en a melee enemy that can do this in the, ga in the next game? <laughs> And he sees Chainblade running around with it. He's like, that's impressive. If you want it to be really impressive, you'll put it on Ratchet and see how well it holds up. And so I was he, like... So he basically called you a pussy. That's right. Double Dog dared you. A lot of, you know what? A lot of development in Ratchet and Clank 3 for me was based on dares and bets. Right? <laughs> I didn't realize that, but looking back, it's, it seems to be true. Yeah. Um, so... I, I, he said, let's put it on Ratchet and see what happens. And I put it on Ratchet, and it didn't break catastrophically. <laughs> it broke a little bit, but not catastrophically. And I was like, I can fix these problems, and it can be on Ratchet. And so we put it on there, and we put it on Ratchet, and it was kind of cool. And, I mean, the final result is super hacked up in a lot of special cases for a lot of different animations. And it might as it's animation-driven in a way. And that depending on what animation Ratchet is playing, the whip will behave differently in terms of how it constrains uh, to all the different joints on the whip. Okay. But it's not actually animated, which was I that's which, which was what I wanted from the beginning, and that's what I was really happy with. Is that we have a whip in this game that's not actually animated, that's not driven by animation. It's procedural. And I was like, yeah, it was procedural, and I was really happy with the way that turned out. And I i mean, that was my big sort of weapon success in this game, to be able to do the plasma with. Now, tell me, Tony, if I'm wrong or not, but I, am I right now playing the Snow Beast Award winner? Uh, no. There's a specific element, uh, and I don't think it's in this mission, uh, that's, that's the Snow Beast Award winner. 
But it is a turret challenge in a battlefield. It if is. If I remember correctly. Just one last thing I'm going to say about the plasma mode before I move on. Go for it. Uh, a resistance had started pre-production at this point. All oh, right. Res so a section of people had moved on to resistance. Like Nathan. Like Nathan. Uh, of like Zombies Best Games fame. Like, like Eric. Uh, Eric, uh, right. Like Max. Uh, Leslie and Peter. Right. Uh, they had all moved on, and they were working on the next-gen thing. Right, I ate. And, uh, and they were writing a physics system for resistance. Like you and, do. Like you do, obviously. And when they had written this physics system, they saw the plasma whip, and they were like, hey, we have actual physics. Why don't we make you an actual whip using the physics system that we used? And so we did a test to try to make a realistic whip that dragged along the ground and uh -huh. hit collision and wrapped around enemies and stuff like that. Oh, I kind of remember that. The big problem with that is that we do not have accurate collision meshes at all in this game. Uh, we rely on cubes and pills a lot, yeah. That's right. And so when it would collide with the world, it wouldn't actually look like it was colliding with the arc. And so we couldn't really do a realistic whip that wrapped around things and rested on rocks and moved up over things. Just, just because our collision it. wasn't built for that sort of effect. All right. Well, that was, that was, you know what? I had fun while learning. <laughs>